Hi everyone, Sandy LaFleur here. I want to welcome you to the Artful Webinars online convention and specifically to this class called Reindeer Games. Thank you so much for signing up. I appreciate it and I hope that you've been having a fantastic time already this week with all the classes and make it and take it and the opening party. I'm sure it's been a hoot. Um, I just want to give you a little explanation as to why you're receiving this class as a recorded video. Um, we are moving and the timing of the selling of our house and the new house being completed just totally ended up to be, we are going to be moving the week that this convention takes place. So while you're having fun painting and everything, I'm going to be loading boxes and driving for a couple days to move to our new home in Oklahoma. I hope you'll forgive me that I'm not here in person with you, but that doesn't mean that you can't email me with questions that you have during the class. I'll do my best to explain everything as properly as I can. And here's an advantage for you. You can watch this video at your leisure. You can fast forward through the stuff that you don't need to see. You can back it up. You can stop it. So you have a little bit of, a, of an advantage over a live class. But again, thank you so much for indulging me and understanding um, that I just couldn't do this live this week. I'd probably rather be teaching this class than loading boxes and driving two days. But that's life, and uh, we have to roll with the punches. So I think we should go ahead and get started. This is the project that we're going to be working on. Um, and if you didn't put yours on a, an MDF arrow like the original, please post a picture of the surface you did use because I love to see um, all the different creative ways that you guys uh, handle my designs. Anyway, so this is what we're going to be working on. Um, I'm going to uh, try to pace myself so I'm not going too fast and try to be very thorough in my explanations. First of all, this is what your uh, piece should look like um, if you've done all the prep according to the prep instructions. And the first color we're going to be using is going to be burnt umber. And as usual, I use DecoArt products. And um, I just love their paints and all the colors they have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be floating some shading on this decoupage background around our reindeer and the books and the popcorn and all the elements of the design. And we're going to be doing that with some very well blended out burnt umber. So get yourself out your favorite flat brush, your favorite shader. Uh, some people like to use angle brushes. Uh, I like to use regular flats. And um, this one is in half inch wash. Sometimes I'll use a three quarter inch. I like to use bigger brushes than most people, um, it, even for the little stuff. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna float shading around this um, reindeer, around all the antlers and their heads and their bodies. So it's a nice soft float. Uh, you don't want it to be harsh. Um, let's get in these little areas here where you can see the background like between the antler and the ear. So I'm going to come around this ear and you can uh, bounce around the piece um, because you don't have to do one reindeer at a time. I mean you can let something dry and then come back to it. So it's just a real easy thing. Um, I'm going to say on a lot because I have a lot of space to fill. I apologize. So I'm going to go over to this side of, the, of my little reindeer guy next to his collar around his cheeks. Tuck it up in his ears here. And it doesn't matter if you get a little shading on the reindeer itself. There's so much stuff that goes on top of these guys that it won't be noticeable. I'm going to get in here because this is the little negative space area. So get in there as best you can into all those little nooks and crannies. Here's another little nook and cranny. I 
I hope that you uh, didn't have any issues with your decoupaging. If you didn't decoupage, I hope you painted your background a really nice color that's going to make these guys pop off the background. And if you know me at all, you know that one of my mantras is to add interest to the background. And by decoupaging uh, this paper on the background, um, we added a lot of interest to the background. So here, it won't take too long to get this shading done because you don't have to be really perfect. We just want to get some color behind these things so that they come up off the background. And see, I'm bouncing around. I'm not staying in the same place. I'm not finishing uh, certain things. You know, the things that I'm working on, I might move to like here, I'm running to the, going to the popcorn in the bowl. I've already gone around the bat. I'm going to go back here and come around his ear. So, just take your time. Do some nice soft floats all around this guy. I know there's a couple places over here I didn't do yet. Under the ear next to the scarf okay let's see let's get some more done here let's finish this side of the popcorn bowl the game boxes and when we get towards the end and we add the names of the games uh, to the boxes you're welcome to change the names come up with something cute Another reason I had to do this is not only were, are we moving that week, but even if we were moved like the week before, um, getting internet hooked up to the house, they have a backlog and they're looking at three to four weeks. So we're hoping we can get on that waiting list before we actually get to Oklahoma so that I won't be Wi-Fi-less when I first get there. That would make it hard to take care of business and bills and all that stuff. So We lucked out the house that I'm in right now. We've been here 42 years. It's hard to imagine not being in this house. But we lucked out and sold the house in less than a week to a young couple with a couple of little boys who are going to be able to make lots of wonderful memories here. Okay, I think I have a couple more spaces here to do. Let's see, around this box. All right. I think I got them all. So that's going to help pop those guys off the background. Now we're also going to float this burnt umber shading around the outside edge of the arrow, um, wherever it's just the decoupaged background. We don't have to do it on the antlers or along here on the bottom where it's all base painted in. So same idea very well blended out um burnt umber and we're going to float shading around the outside edge and that just kind of um it makes it look a little older and just kind of tones down the background a little bit because we don't want the background to be the focal point we want our reindeers to be the focal point. So, just a quick little float of burnt umber. And I know you notice um, when I float, I kind of pity pat my floats. I like to do that because I have, I have. It's easier for me to control um, them and blend them out a little bit more. 
I don't know if that makes sense. Not, but here we go. A little touch there. Oh, I guess I didn't do next to this side of that reindeer. So we can fix that real quick. And I think that's going to do it. Okay, so our background shading is done. We are going to move on to the reindeers and start working on them. So the colors that you're going to need to start with are going to be fawn. If you don't have fawn, if you still have mink tan, that will work. Um, you're also going to need warm white. We're going to use our burnt umber again. We're also going to be using a dragon fruit and country red. So you want to get out those colors and then we'll come back and we'll start working on our little reindeer. Okay, so all of the reindeer are basically painted the same. The only difference between them might be um, the look in their eyes or, it, or their scarves or collars. So basically, um, we're just gonna do uh, dry some dry brushing to each of the reindeers and then we'll move on to the next step and so uh, dry brushing um, if you haven't dry brushed before i'm going to give you a little demonstration of how i dry brush but please if you're not comfortable doing this then um, do it a different way do it the way that you're comfortable with uh, whatever works for you that i'm a big proponent of do it the way it works best for you so when I dry brush, I like to use um, a Langnickel short round sable brush. And um, this one is a size 10. Um, you could also, uh, a 12 would work. Um, it depends on this, the area that you're gonna be um, dry brushing. And so I like to use this brush. And when you first get it, let me see if I can find a new one. It's pretty, um, pointy or pretty long and round and as you start using it it the br uh, bristles kind of wear off and as they wear off they, it becomes a better dry brush so it will wear down to where it's flat and this is a great dry brush uh, place to be for cheeks and stuff like that this one's a little too big for what i want to do here so um I'm going to go ahead and go back and use my 10. And so when I dry brush, what I like to do is put my paint out on the palette. This is Fawn. We're going to dry brush with Fawn. And I'm, I like to explain, well, let me see. I like to pick up the paint on the brush. You don't have to pick up a lot. And then I go and I scrub it on my palette. I go in circles, clockwise, counterclockwise. And what I'm doing is I'm working that paint into the bristles of the brush um, so that I can use that. Then what I do is I go to my towel, normally it's the one that's underneath my project, and I wipe that brush out. So I want to remove a lot of the paint. Please don't add water to your brush. It won't be a dry brush then. And then what I like to do is I like to go to this area on my hand. And when I hit that area on my hand with the brush, it feels cold. And I kind of scrub it around in a circle. It's not going to hurt you. It's non-toxic. Um, the worst thing I've gotten from it is these age spots. So, um, But if you don't want to rub paint on your hand, I totally understand. But as I rub it around, it loses its coolness. It doesn't get warm or hot or anything. It just loses its coolness. And when it's not cold anymore, that's a good indicator that you've taken enough paint out of your brush so that you can go to your piece and start dry brushing. So we're gonna dry brush some highlighting on the tops of the ears on each guy. So I could have taken out a little bit more paint, but it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna top edge of each ear. I'll just move over here and do these other guys' ears, the top edge. And you should be able to get quite a bit of dry brushing done with what's in your brush. 
I'm going to go back. Okay, let's stay here. And I'm going to go across the top of their heads. Just all around the top of their heads. If you can get a little in between their eyes, that would be great. To get it on the eye, it's okay. Another do the next guy across the top of his head. Now his eyes are pretty close together, so I don't think I'm going to get in there. Okay, and now I need to reload my brush, so I'm going to go through the same steps. I'm going to pick up the paint. I'm going to rub it around on my palette in those counterclockwise and clockwise motions. I'm going to wipe it out on my towel. And I'm going to go back to my hand and get rid of some of that paint that way. Okay. And let's get this guy. Now, uh, let's see. Two of them have little bodies. So we want to dry brush some highlighting on their body. I'm going to go here and here and this guy has a neck so I want to go and dry brush through the center of his neck. Now don't wash this dry brush out. We are going to go back to each one of these places and we're going to dry brush a little bit brighter highlight and we're going to do that just by picking up some warm white on this dirty brush. And again, we're just going to pick up warm white. We're going to blend it on our palette. And so what we're doing basically is making a lighter value of fawn. So I'm going to do the same steps. Blend it. Then I'm going to wipe it on my towel. I'm going to go to my hand. Eventually you'll have a whole bunch of colors on the back of your hand. Apologize. My husband's out putting up a ladder. Some of the things you have to do to get a house ready. Alright, so let's go back into their ears. Across their forehead. Other ear. So every place that you just dry brushed with fawn, you're going to dry brush with warm white. So the second time around will be much faster because you already know where you're going. Okay, and his neck, his little body, and his little body. Now if I was smart, I would have had you do the bat too. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up a little fawn and put the fawn back in my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and dry brush this back too because it's painted the same color. Might as well do it while we're, we've got the color in our brush. And then I've lightened it up with some warm white. And I'm going to dry brush a little bit brighter highlight on that back. So there we go. Now we're going to float some shading so you can wash your dry brush out. And what I like about these uh, Langnickel Short Round Sables is I can dry them and use them again relatively quickly. I just scrub them dry on the towel that I have underneath my projects. So now we are going to float some shading on our reindeer. It's kind of hard because the arrow wants to go into my paint puddles over here. So, so a side load float of burnt umber. Let's go ahead and float shading on his ears next to his head. And we'll do that on all of our guys, just so we can keep track of where we're going. 
so on the ears next to the head now on this ear here we have our ear on top of it so we're going to go ahead and go around the ear that's on top of it also If you hear clunking, it's my husband on the roof. Okay, so I've done shading on the ears next to the head. I'm going to shade around the top of each head. top of his head. And around the top of guy number three. Reindeer number three. also want to float 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 we want to float shading on the top of their head above their um, jowls or cheeks and their nose with burnt umber so basically the whole top of their head gets shading around it or gels, whatever we want to call them, above the nose. Okay, and these guys that have a body, we want to float along the bottom edge. This one you get to do a little corner. We also want to go on this one that has a neck. We want to go on his neck under his mouth. We're going to go under the under and next to the scarf and the basketball on this guy. Let's do under his collar on this third guy. I'm going to go above his collar. We're going to need a liner brush right now and some thinned burnt umber. This is something that I do to basically anything I paint that has eyes. Since I don't have paint much that looks real, it's always so, it's always these whimsical things. This is something that I always do to their eyes and I will get a little closer so you can see. On each, above each eye, what I want to do is I want to take my liner brush and thinned burnt umber and I want to line a shadow above each eye and what that's going to do is going to set the eye back into the head. That way it's not just sitting on top of his face, it's actually kind of sunk into his head. So with my liner brush, I like to start about mm, two thirds of the way down one side of the eye and I'm on the point of my liner and as I come around the top of the eye I flatten my liner out so I get a point and then I come back 
I mean, flatten my liner out so I get a wider stroke. And then I come back to the point on the other side. So I will do close-ups of every eye so you can maybe figure out what I'm doing. So on the tip of my liner, as I come around the top of the eye, I flatten. And then I come back up to the uh, tip on the other side. So we have six little eyes. You'll be very well practiced at this by the time you get it done. And this is a wash of burnt umber. It's not straight burnt umber. It's a shadow, so it's a wash. But you can see it already makes their eyes look a little better. On the tip, and flatten, and back up to a point. Last eye. All right. Now, we are going to take some dragon fruit and you probably want a little round brush or a tiny filbert. Let me see if I can find a round brush here that I want to use. That's a liner. Here's one. All right, I'm going to make a wash of dragon fruit. And what I want to do is I want to paint the inside of each ear with this wash of dragon fruit. So I'm going to go over here. So I just want to pink up the inside of each ear. Okay, really easy. adds a little character to their ears and yes we did float some shading there but it's so right that we paint over that this one you can see a little bit of the inside of the ear above that middle guy's ear. And last ear. All right. So I am going to dry that fairly quickly so that we can come back and float some shading on them. But they're starting to they're starting to get cute. If I say so myself. I'm kind of prejudiced though. If you don't have one yet, you might want to invest in one of these Ranger heated craft guns. Um, they have them on Amazon, I know Sandy Warner McTeer sells them. Um, they are a great tool. Just if you order it off Amazon, make sure that you um, get the one that's for America, not the European one. You'll have trouble plugging it in if you get the European one. All right, so we are going to float shading inside these pink parts of the ear with country red. And basically, it's going to go um, around the whole inside, okay? You want to blend it out. You don't want it to be um, real harsh. And I, let me show you what I mean when I say blend something out. Um, when I want to soften my floats a little bit, if I have a really dark color, like this would be really dark on that, 
what I do is I corner load just like I was going to do a float and normally when you blend for a float you blend and you stay kind of in the same line this of paint but when I want to soften that float what I do is I blend and walk away from that main line so I'm leaving more paint on my palette and I'm softening that float a little bit so when I say you want to blend it out really well that's kind of, that's what I'm talking about so that you get a softer float so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and and shade with this well blended out country red in each ear next to the head a little tiny float you just kind of stick your brush in the, there and put a little color down and you also want to get the corner of your brush into that little uh, piece of ear that's right next to the antler and you really can't tell yet but as we add the other floats they'll show it'll show better I'm going to go along the lower edge of the um, pink part of the ear in each of them and then I'll come back and go along the upper edge. So having three of them it kind of gives your float a time to dry a little bit and so you can do all this at once. And now I'm going to go back and float along the upper edge. Inside the ear. Today is kind of warm in California. So the paint's drying a little faster. It has been cold for California the past few weeks. I, you notice I prefaced, I, I said that with for California because apparently I don't know what cold is yet. All right, so we are going to dry brush a little bit of highlighting inside those ears with warm white. So you want to dry these really quick and that's going to make that shading just stand out a little bit more. So get your little dry brush out, pick up some warm white, just warm white. Let's just add a touch of highlight inside each ear. Oops, I guess I could have showed you what I was doing. It's not much, just scrub a little bit of color on there. All right, so their ears are done. Okay. So let's wash out that dry brush. We're going to move and work on the uh, snout, the nose, and the mouth next. And so the colors you're going to need are going to be golden straw, warm white, dragon fruit, milk chocolate, burnt umber, country red. I will print those up on the screen so you'll know what colors you're going to be needing and I'm going to pull them and I will be right back. Okay, so let's get working on those snouts and jowls. So we we are going to dry brush all of our snouts and jowls with golden straw and just like we did on the um, head and stuff after we're done with the first dry brush of golden straw we are going to pick up some warm white and dry brush a little bit brighter highlight on those. So dry brush, golden straw. 
Let's see, I'm getting uh, quite a mix of color on my hand here. All right, so I'm just going to dry brush basically through the center area of each of those gels. Just brighten them up a little bit. Let's go over to this guy. Now if you're doing dry brush right, you should have to really scrub to get that color out of that brush. If it comes off in splotches, then you need to take a little bit more paint out of your brush. So let's pick up some warm white and let's get a lighter value of golden straw going. And I'm going to dry brush a little bit brighter. And this I'm going to keep it mainly in the center area, not kind, not as wide as um, I did the first dry brush. We're going to wash out our dry brush and then you want to dry it really good because we need to give this guy some cheeks with dragon fruit. So if you're lucky you might have another dry, uh, another brush that you can um, use. I have several but I'm going to use this one because it's the right size. But if you have several you, you can uh, get a clean one that's dry already. This is pretty dry. So I'm just going to dry brush some nice cheeks. And it's going to be up in this top area of these jowls, these cheeks. Not too, too much. No, there we go. I don't want these to be real, real dark. I just want it to be like a hint of color, but I need a little more of a hint of color there. There we go. Better to be too light than too dark to start off. All right, so he's got some nice little rosy cheeks. Let's work on the next guy. Didn't take out it. See, I didn't take out enough paint. All right, and this guy gets some cheeks. I'm trying to scrub the last little bit of paint out of this. nice rosy cheeks on him. And then you can wash out that dry brush again. We're not going to do anything lighter. And now what we're going to do is we are going to float shading on this part of the um, face. And that's going to be with milk chocolate. So what I want to do first is I want to float a little bit of this milk chocolate in the corners of each mouth. 
So it's going to be another one of those, just kind of touch your brush down a little bit. But I want to separate that mouth from the rest of the face. So just, I blended it too much and you couldn't even tell I did it. Just a corner of your brush gets in there. Alright, and then what we're going to do is we are going to float shading in each section, of each section of the face. Okay, so I'm going to start about halfway up and I'm going to float this milk chocolate down into the bottom, but I also want to come up under the nose to form that center separation. And here I can start right at the center and float in the bottom of the face and come about halfway up the side. Same on all of them. This one you have a little bit of the basketball to go around. And I'm just going to come up the center. I got a little bit of milk chocolate in his mouth, but that's all right. And the other side. And let's get our next guy. Him, you go up and around the scarf a little bit. Now they're starting to get some, look cute, get some character and look cute. Let's go ahead and float a touch of country red across the bottom of each lip, okay? So here again, it's just another little, stick the corner of your brush in there. So I'm just gonna go across the bottom of the lip with some country red. Changes the look of his lip a little bit. All right. And let's go ahead and float a white highlight across the top edge of each snout. Now this is white. You still want to blend it out really well. You don't want this to be a real harsh white float. You want it to be a nice soft white float. So I'm going to start about halfway down and I'm going to float till I get to his nose. And it'll tone down a little bit. Now if you like to mop out your floats, this would be a good place to do it. Just to soften it even more. Reindeer number two. And it's just to really tell you get to their nose. Don't have to go beyond the nose. And again, I'm going to mop this out and soften it. And last one.
All right. So we just have a couple more uh, little things to do and then we'll move on to the antlers. And one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna float a very soft, warm white highlight across the top of each lip, okay? So three quick little floats of warm white. Blend it out. Gonna get tired of hearing that, maybe. So just across the top of the lip here. And try to keep it on the lip, not inside the lip. Do as I say, not as I do. Isn't that what we used to say to our kids? I don't know if I ever said that. But a lot of times that's what we need. Do as I say, not as I do. So you can see this is really faint. Just enough to highlight that top edge a little bit. Not a lot. And then what we want to do is we want to get out some fresh burnt umber. And we want to add these little whisker dots uh, on our guys. So you can do that with a liner brush or you can get out your stylus. I'm going to go ahead and use a stylus. They don't need to be real big. And you want to keep them off the pink of the cheeks. Keep them mainly through this center area here. And that's burnt umber. Just add some sprinkling of dots to act like that's where they would have whiskers coming out. Not too many, but more than three. I usually start with the middle one because that's usually the biggest blob of paint that's coming off your stylus. Thankfully for you, I don't highlight those dots. I have been known to get crazy like that and highlight things this small, but not this time. So just give him a five o'clock shadow. That'll do it. All right, so let's let that dry. Put my stylus away. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to dry brush some highlighting on these antlers, and we're also going to work on this collar since it's painted with lamp black, also. And what you're going to need for that is you're going to need moody blue. So a couple new colors. Moody Blue and Lamp Black you're going to want to put out on your palette. I love Moody Blue. It's a really nice color. So with Moody Blue and again your dry brush, brush uh, we are going to dry brush highlighting through the center of each of the antlers and through the center of this collar that's on Reindeer number three. Getting quite a rainbow on my hand here. I need some green. Do we have any green that we're going to dry brush with? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and just get this one done. So I'm just dry brushing on that front edge of that collar, not in the back here. And just wherever you can get color scrubbed on those antlers, 
go ahead and do that. And again, just like we've done with our um, other dry brushes, we are going to lighten this up a little bit by picking up some warm white. So once you get the moody blue on there, you're going to go ahead and do warm white. And as long as we're doing uh, antlers that are lamp black, let's go ahead and do the noses too. Get some moody blue in the noses. You're going to be a pro at dry brushing. And let's get over to this guy. The top of his nose. And I need to pick up a little more paint. Let's do his antlers. All right, so I have this the blue on there. Now I'm going to pick up a little warm white and my warm white kind of dried out so I'm going to give myself a new little dot to work with. I'm going to pick up some warm white so I get that lighter value moody blue. As you can see here, moody blue and then with some warm white it's taking it up a level or two and I'm going to go back and on these spaces that I did the moody blue I'm going to dry brush a little moody blue plus warm white just to brighten them up a little bit oh, my nose and let's go over here to this guy We are going to float shading with Lamp Black, and I know that sounds kind of weird because this is painted Lamp Black, but I still want to come back and float some shading with Lamp Black just to tone down those highlights a little bit. It really does make a difference. So side load float of Lamp Black. I'm going to float on the antler next to the head to start with. Basically the entire antler is going to get floated on every edge, but I'm going to start off with the easy stuff. So I'm going to float where the antler meets the head. And then here, we'll go ahead and get this float in. This uh, antler is on top of that one, so I'm just going to tuck that shadow in there to separate them. On the um, collar, I want to float on the inside of the collar next to the neck. And then I'm also going to float on the outside edges of the collar. So I did just tucked a little color inside the neck, uh, next to the neck, and then I did the outside edges. On the nose, I'm going to float in the bottom. So in this V, so I'm going to go down the V 
and then I kind of walk that color out in the point and then I bring it back up the other side. So let's go here to this antler next to the head on it. And then this one, we just have the nose to do. So I'm going to just do the V part, not across the top. And it really does make a difference. It, you see how it tones that highlight down a little bit. And we'll go over to this guy. The antlers next to the head. And in the V. All right, now we can go back and we're going to float basically down both sides of the antlers. So I'm going to do one side first and then I'll come back and do the other side. So I'm just going to go all the way around the sides of this of these antlers. It makes it nice because you do one side and then you come back and do the other side. The first side you did is basically done, dry. All these little things we have to do to make them look good. Now when you have them like this, you're going to go down one side and then come over here and go down this side and then down this side. So it's three separate little prongs there. So however you want to do it, all every edge of these antlers gets a float of lamp black. Okay. And now I'm going to come back and do the opposite side. I probably am going to turn this guy around and do that. So let's see. this other side done. You can clean up the edge of your antlers this way too because the black will hide anything. Doesn't take all that long. Right. Now we are going to do a highlight float across each, the top of each nose with some very well blended out moody blue. Okay. 
Okay, so just across the top, just a quick little float of moody blue. Let me turn him this way so it's easier for me. It is all about me, you know. And the last guy. And then we're also going to do a highlight float of moody blue across the top edge of the front of this collar. And that just helps to uh, make the front um, show up better, separates it better from the back that goes around his neck. Okay, so we're moving right along. We are going to be working on their eyes next. And what we need to do is we need to get out a few new colors. We're going to need Irish moss and soft black. So let's get those colors out and we'll work on eyes. All right, so I've got out my um, Irish moss. And what I want to do is I want to put the color in their eyes. And what I want you to see is I'm going to paint a little crescent shape stroke in the bottom of each eye with Irish moss. And now if you see here closely, it's in the bottom of the eye, but it's not right against the bottom edge. I want to leave just a little rim of lamp black showing along the bottom of that eye. So don't let the word stroke scare you because you don't have to do it all in one stroke. Um, we're just going to, let me see if I can get a little closer for you. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start up about halfway up the side. And what I do is I like to line in that bottom edge first. So that way I can be sure to leave that little rim of lamp black. And then I just paint the top edge so I get my shape in there. And it doesn't have to be opaque, okay? And so there, I have a nice little crescent shaped stroke in that eye. I'm going to go to this eye. Same thing, about halfway up. And I'm going to go along that bottom edge there. And then I'm going to finish it off and fill it in. Okay? Now, if you were to do that and you got a funky shape, it's no worries because you can just come back with lamp black and straighten it up. So let's give our other reindeer some eyes. I should have started at the other end so I don't put my hands in it. So I'm going to go way down here to this guy. And I'm going to give him that stroke in the bottom of his eye. Now see, that one's a little funky, so I'm going to come in later and fix that, make it look better. And this side. And then I'll get this center guy. So, I said I didn't care for the shape on this one, so I'm just going to get into my lamp black, if I can find it back on my palette, and I'm just going to fix it. So, I think this edge was a little thick. So, there, easy peasy, all fixed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, liner brush and I'm going to pick up some Irish moss 
And then I'm going to pick up some warm white and kind of blend them on my palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line a, a highlight through the center of each of those green stri green strokes, stripes, strokes. And it's just like I said, I'm going to line it. So I just add a couple of lines. Oops, I guess I could be over here. And see, I'm just taking my liner brush and lining that lighter color through the center of those green strokes. And guy number three. All right, there we go. The next thing we want to do is we want to add some eyelashes to our eyes. These are really easy. You can line them individually or you can uh, muff them in like I do. So what I like to do is thin down some lamp black paint, which is the color we're using. And I kind of, set the tip of my liner brush down in the top center inside the eye and then what I like to do is just push and squiggle the brush to add some eyelashes but you could certainly go in and just line them individually if you want nothing fancy about them just some squiggles of lamp black to give the idea that they have some little eyelashes. So six little eyes, squiggle some eyelashes on them. Let's get over here to this guy. Quick and easy. Now we are going to add a highlight dot in the top of each eye, and that's just done with warm white. And while we're at it, we're also going to line our tap a little bit of a highlight down the center of the highlighted part of the green of the eyes. So just I'm just going to use my liner brush and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of warm white paint and just going to touch a little highlight in the top of each eye and then I'm also going to just take the brush and tap 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 a little bit of warm white down the center of the highlighted part of the green of the eye. That just really wakes them up. So just a just a dot or a set down and a little tap tap tap. All right. Moving right along. And now they have character. They also have some little squiggly eyebrows. And those are put on with thinned soft black. So again, liner brush, thin down some soft black. And just give them a few, a couple little eyebrows. Thin and kind of squiggly because all reindeers have eyebrows, right? You knew that. At least all my reindeers have eyebrows. Right. 
So we can call those eyes done. Now we're going to uh, float some deeper shading here and there on our um, reindeer just to make them look a little richer, a little uh, better. So a uh, side load float of soft black. And what we're going to do is we're going to float that on the brown part of the ears next to the head just to define that a little better and we're also going to float that on the um, <clears throat> above the jowls and across the top of the nose Okay, so we have, I'm going to turn this a little bit so it's easier, just on the brown part of the ears, next to the head, and then on this guy, you want to do it under his head and mouth. And you also want to go above and below the collar just to deepen up those a few of those areas a little bit all right let's go to guy number two he's going to get it on his the brown part of his ears next to his head That was a little strong. I think I'm going to get my mop brush and mop that down a little bit. And above his jowls and nose. And this guy too, you want to go under and next to the basketball and the scarf. One more. And we can call these reindeer done. Same place, brown of the ears next to the head. And above the jowls and nose. I got on his little face a little too much, so I'll just go wipe that away. We are going to move on to the um, blue scarf. Let me get a little tighter. Oops, wrong way. On that scarf. And we are going to need warm white, which we have on our palette. You're also going to need deep midnight blue. All right, so I pulled my deep midnight blue out. And again, we're going to dry brush some highlighting on this scarf. So dress your brush accordingly. And we're just going to go warm white through the center. So this is one section and then we're going to go through the center of the part that goes around his neck. I, think I want a little bit more color. And as long as we're dry brushing warm white, let's go ahead and dry brush some highlighting through the center of this red box. Might as well kill two birds, three birds with one stone. And we're also going to dry brush some highlighting through the center 
of the yellow box. So get over here. It's not going to show up quite as much as it did on the red, but we'll know it's there when we do our shading. And what's nice is you can go right through the baseball because it's painted with warm white. Right, now there are some stripes on that um, blue scarf. And so we're going to add some horizontal stripe. Well, horizontal? No, vertical stripes. To get it right, hand. So what I like to do is I like to start... Um, in the middle so like under his mouth and I want you to visualize that there's like a crease in um, the center of this scarf so I'm just gonna lightly li little line in a crease so I have an idea of where it is and think like a scarf it's not just flat we want to give it some shape so I'm gonna kind of curve the stripes so I'm going to curve them, and then when I get to that center thing, it's going to dip in, and then it's going to go curve again in the bottom. So we're giving it some shape. There. And though these curved to the right, now when you go to the other side of center, you want to curve these to the left. So that way it looks like it's going around. And then the same thing with the um, tail on this. You don't want to just do straight up and down lines. You want to curve them a little bit. Okay? Just to add to the illusion that that has some kind of shape. And you can make your stripes wider or thinner. Whatever you'd like. Okay, so there we go. We have that. So we're gonna I'm gonna dry those stripes really quick and then we'll get to our shading with deep midnight blue. So I get that out onto my palette. So dry your stripes. So basically every edge of this scarf is going to get a shade of deep midnight blue. You, here again, you want to blend it out well. You want it to be soft. So I'm going to float across the top of the tail. And then I'll come back and float across the bottom of the tail. I'm bending over this piece so I can see. I just want to make sure I'm not getting my head in the camera. Okay, now I'm going to go across the bottom. Next, we're going to go, let's do both sides of the part that's wrapped around his neck. And here, what I want you to do is I want to help form this crease through the middle. So I'm going to start at the top. And when I get to where that crease is, I'm going to stop and drag my brush across the crease just to give it the look that it's kind of folded and creased up there. I'm going to do that on this, 
the other side too. So start at the top. When I get to where that crease is, I'm going to drag the brush across a little bit and drag some of that color. Let's go ahead and fill in this little spot and then come down next to this game box. We have one more spot and that's going to be across the top next to his face. An easy peasy scarf. There we go. Reindeer number one is done. All right, let's go to our white scarf over here. And um, the dots have kind of disappeared, so I'm going to grab my country red so I can add the dots back on. All right, I'm going to just take some country red, which I got it out, but didn't put it on my palette. All right, so I'm going to thin down some country red, make it a little bit of a wash. I don't, these, these dots don't have to be opaque. You just want to give the idea that there are dots on there. So I'm just going to add some little red dots. I'm not even trying to follow a pattern or anything of the dots that are behind and obviously I'm not trying to make them perfectly round. And let's see, let's get some down here. Don't get too carried away with dots, although you'll be happy to know we do not highlight or shade all of these dots. Must have been lazy that day. All right, so I've added the dots back on. If you have painted yours scarf and you can still see the red dots through them, great, you can skip that step. Okay, so now we're gonna take our liner brush and we are going to line some thin country red stripes on this scarf. Keep it in mind that um, we do want to follow the shape again. So I'm going to line. These don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfectly spaced. They're just to add some interest to it. Now, this I'm going to go across this way on this scarf tail. And I also took some warm white. I know, hard to believe this, what's coming. But I did, <coughs> excuse me, line a little highlight of warm white on the center. Just a touch in the center of each of those stripes. Kind of anal, but oh well. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just enough to, to lighten up the center of those stripes a little bit. So let's dry this. And then we're gonna float some shading. So we are going to float shading first with Country Red. So blend it out again. Nice soft float. I'm going to go next to the basketball and next to the place where the scarf folds over. I'm going to go down both sides of the tail. Dry that a little bit. And 
and then I'm going to go under the face, the head, and you can go ahead and carry this float all the way across the top of the fold over part. And then I'm also going to go across the bottom of it. So we've kind of pinked that scarf up, but that's fine. And now you're going to need just a touch of moody blue. Not a lot. If you can get in the moody blue that's on your palette, that'd be great. Just crack it open because you only need just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we are going to float shading again in all those places with a very soft float of moody blue. So I'm going to go back here next to the basketball and next to where the scarf folds over and I'm going to try to keep it on that part instead of going everywhere willy-nilly. Up and down both sides. You're going to do a much nicer job, I'm sure. And then across the top under the face and lip. Again. See, I'm not putting down a whole lot of color. Doesn't have to be a bright blue float. All right, there we go. So now what you need to do is get your pattern out and you can put the pattern on for the uh, holly leaves that are on the collar. So we're going to need a couple of colors. We've had them out before, but yours might be dry. You're going to need Irish Moss, Golden Straw, Hauser Dark Green, Country Red, and Warm White. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to paint that holly leaf in with Irish Moss. So just a quick little base coat of Irish moss. Again, it doesn't have to be completely opaque. And we'll dry that real quick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to float some highlighting across the top of that leaf and across the top of the center with golden straw. And this will go on kind of right, but it tones down as it dries. So let's just go across this top edge. And then I'm going to give it a center vein line. And we'll get that dry. And then I'm going to float shading along the bottom of the leaf with the Hauser Dark Green. A holly leaf. We're going to paint the um, berry. There's just one, but if you want to add more, that's fine. Just make sure it's an odd number. But there's just one berry. It's country red. If you want to stencil it on there, you can. 
and then that berry just has a quick little warm white highlight on it. And voila, the collar is done. We are going to work on the baseball bat next. So you're going to need, we already dry brushed that fawn in that warm white, so we're going to need burnt umber, soft black, and warm white. So let's see, I'll grab those colors and be right back. So we're going to float shading on the bat and it's basically going to go around all four sides. And that's going to be done with burnt umber. So I'm probably just going to go start here at the top, go around what eventually will become popcorn, and come down the side. And next to the basketball. And then I, I'm going to turn this guy around. And I'm going to go next to the cheek. And then up the other side. So we've got burnt umber shading all the way around our bat. Now you want to take your liner brush and we are going to thin down some burnt umber and we're going to add a little bit of wood grain to our bat. So I am going to start up here at the top and I'm just going to kind of hit or miss pull a line to start adding wood grain. Now when I want to add a, um, <clears throat> a knot hole what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my liner, press it down, and then come back up on the tip. And so there I have a little knot hole. And this wood grain, the lines don't have to be complete. They can be shorter. Um, don't get too carried away with the knot holes. But just add some nervous lining. I always like to put a little line around the knot hole just to give it more of the impression that it's a knot hole. So just some little lines. Think like wood grain. So we have some wood grain there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber and just pick up a little warm white to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to highlight around that knot hole. I need to make it a little lighter. I'm going to get into that area around that knot hole and just highlight it a little bit. And highlight little bits of the wood grain here and there. So not too much. All right, let's dry that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to deepen the shading along the bottom and next to the basketball and the face with a float of soft black. just to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to start here, go next to the popcorn, and come down this lower edge, and then tuck that bat, that bat back behind the basketball and his cheek. And now if you need to put the pattern on for the lettering, 
you can go ahead and do that or you can use a uh, thin uh, paint pen but I just wrote what uh, NP North Pole slugger on the back because we have Louisville sluggers so we might as well have a North Pole slugger and you want to kind of put this in the center area because you're going to put letters on top so all that hard work on those little letters on North Pole Slugger you want to be able to see them so just add whatever it is you're going to write on your bat or you can save it and do it later okay there we go we have one of our games done we're going to move on to the basketball next and we're going to need a couple new colors. We're going to need honey brown. And I think that's the only new color we need. So I'm going to grab that and I'll be back. Okay, we are going to <clears throat> stipple some texture because you know basketballs have kind of that orange pill um, texture. So we're going to stipple some texture onto this um, basketball. And I like to use the same brush that I um, dry brush with to do stippling. But you can use your whatever dry brush you like. I'm going to pick up some honey brown on the brush I'm going to stipple with. And then I'm also going to pick up a little warm white because I want it to be just a little bit lighter value. And all I'm going to do is stipple this color mix on my basketball to give it a little texture so basketball it doesn't look real great yet but it'll get there right you can wash out your stipple brush then the stripes on the basketball I'm going to go ahead and line those with soft black I don't even own a basketball anymore. It's crazy. Kids are grown and gone. We don't even have a basketball hoop out front anymore. Okay, so we have some stripes. And then we're going to line a highlight on those stripes with warm white. And that's going to be kind of top center and let's dry those stripes and then we'll do our first shading doesn't look much like a basketball does it and we're going to do our first shading with country red so first of all I'm going to go on the ball next to all the game boxes
I also want to go all the way around the outside edge of the ball. And you can go across the bottom. And then we're also going to go next to these stripes. on both sides. Okay, we want that to dry. And then we're going to go back and we're going to shade again with some very well blended out burnt umber. in all the same places. Makes it easy. So next to the game boards. I'm going to deepen this a little bit more. Um, let's go. I'll go against the stripes. side, both sides. And then all the way around the outside edge again. Looks a little more like a basketball. We have a final highlight that we need to dry brush on, and that's with warm white. So we're going to dry that float. And that highlight is going to be like a crescent shape. It's going to follow the shape of the basketball. So I'm going to start it right a little below the edge and just follow the shape of that basketball and give it that highlight to give it a little bit more <clears throat> dimension. All right, we're going to work on our game boxes. And we're going to start down here with the um, green one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to work on all three of them at the same time so things can dry. And so the green one has a couple of stripes, blue stripes, and they're just done with a wash of moody blue which I think you have on your palette. So just a nice wash of moody blue. You want to add a couple of stripes on each end. We'll go up to the red box and we're going to paint those little candy canes in with warm white. You don't 
don't have to be perfect, obviously. And the yellow box. Hmm, we're going to float some shading on the yellow box with milk chocolate. And basically it's going to go around all four sides, plus this box, the lid doesn't go all the way down. So um, we're going to float underneath that lid too. A nice soft float of milk chocolate. I'm going to go down both sides of the box. Gonna go across the bottom of the box. Of course, I'm gonna stop when I get to my baseball. I'm gonna go around. Oh, let's go across the top. Let's dry that. We need to go under the box lid. And we also need to go around the baseball. I'm going to turn this so I can get on the other side of that baseball. down to those little candy canes and we're going to put the stripes on the candy canes with country red. Just teeny tiny stripes. Nothing too terrible detailed. Just to give it the idea that there's candy canes there. And as long as we're um, doing country red on our liner brush, we can go ahead and line the stitching on the baseball. So, much like the basketball, the baseball gets these curved lines. And then we just add some stitching coming out from those lines with thin country red. We are going to go ahead and float a warm white highlight across the bottom edge of the lid on this guy just to make it a little more believable that that's a lid on the box. And 
and then the stripe there's a stripe that goes just above it just goes along the bottom edge of the lid and you can do that with Hauser dark green and a liner brush And then the lettering for bingo, or if you want to make it say Santa, because I know at Christmas we play Santa instead of bingo, um, that is done with thin country red. And again, you can put the pattern on. This is something you can do um, later on. doesn't have to be done now. Take your time. So we have one game box done. Surprisingly, I do not highlight that lettering. Let's go to our baseball. And it gets a little bit of shading in the back side with moody blue. So I'm going to come across this back side of this ball with moody blue. And, you know, let's go to the bowl of popcorn. As long as we're up this way. It has a thin stripe across the top of the bowl that's done with country red. So just a nice old-fashioned bowl with a stripe of country red across it. That way that stripe can dry before we come back and do shading and highlighting. Um, the baseball. Let's do a highlight on the front top edge with warm white. right over those red stitches and everything. All right, let's go down to our um, red box. And we are gonna float shading. We're gonna need a new color. We're gonna need black plum, which is the color we haven't used yet. And <clears throat> we're going to float shading on that red box on all four sides with black plum. And yes, that's going to go on the candy canes a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm going to do both edges. I'm going to dry that a little bit. And then I'm going to float across the top and the bottom. While we let that floating dry, we're going to go back to our green box and we're going to dry brush some highlighting on it with warm white. 
and that's going to go all the way across including on those um, blue stripes so just through the center Ooh, a little bright and it'll be okay including on those stripes let's go back to our red box and the lettering on it is painted with thinned warm white and again you're welcome to put the pattern on if you need to this one doesn't have to be so neat Okay. We are going to float shading on all four sides of this green box with Hauser Dark Green. Just wanted a little more color. Oops, didn't want that much color. And I'm going to dry it just so I can do the top and the bottom. And now you get easy, you get the easy way out on the lettering on this guy. Um, I did the lettering <clears throat> and the details on the stripes with an ultra fine point sharpie. So first of all, I want to dry this. And then what I'm going to do is I <clears throat> nervously outlined the stripes on either side because I mean you went to all the work of putting them on there you might as well see them and then I did the lettering with the pen and you can name this game whatever you like I called it Dear Opoly. And I could have moved that over a little bit, but it'll be just fine. All right. So, I think we have all the game boxes done. And that, so we're going to go up to the um, bowl. And it has some, I know it's painted warm white, but we are going to dry brush 
warm white in the center, if I can find a spot on my palette. We're going to just dry brush through the center of this bowl with warm white and across that stripe. We are going to float shading on the bowl and that's basically going to go across all four sides with very well blended out deep midnight blue. So if you can find your deep midnight blue and crack it open because you don't need very much. I'm going to go down both sides. I think I need a little, well maybe not, a little bit more color but maybe not. And I'll dry that real quick and I'm going to go across the top and the bottom. So we're going to add some popcorn, even though it gets kind of covered up by the lettering. So I'm going to take a post-it note and I'm going to put it across the top edge of the bowl just to keep that straight edge. And I'm going to stipple the popcorn with golden straw plus warm white. I like lots of butter on my popcorn. So, just going to stipple it in. Keep in mind it doesn't have to look great because it's going to get mostly covered up. So golden straw plus warm white. And then I'm going to just wipe the brush out, pick up a little milk chocolate, and just stipple in some darker areas it's where the popcorn got burnt. And then I also want to wipe that brush out and pick up just straight warm white just to highlight and give it the look that it has kernels or puffs of popcorn. And you're going to do all this work and cover it up. So don't worry about it too much. All right, so we're going to call that popcorn. So the next thing we need to do is we need to work on our lettering. So if you uh, don't have a printout of the lettering, you're going to need that. So I am going to back off of this a little bit. Very slowly, apparently. And what we're going to do is you're going to need your printout of your lettering and a pair of scissors. What I want you to do is I want you to cut out each letter as its own little rectangle. Don't cut like around the curves and things like that. You just want them to be little rectangles. So that the way I like to do it is I'll cut along the bottom edge and I'll cut along the top edge. And then I'll go through and finish off the little squares here. So, there's one. So 
So this is what you want to do is you want to go through and cut out all the lettering. Keeping them in little squares. They don't have to be the same size squares. out your little squares. Glad I didn't give this a longer title. And let's go to game. Get the end of game. I like doing lettering this way because it's neat. You don't have to worry about line and all those things. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the trash. The next thing I want to do is I want to lay this lettering out, kind of place it where I want it to go. And so if you need to pick this up, what you want to do is just lick your finger just a little bit and then you can pick up each letter and start kind of laying it out. Just make sure you spell reindeer right. I just like to kind of space it out. You don't need to line it up all straight and neat. And here we go covering up that popcorn. So this just kind of gives you an idea of how your letters are going to be placed. when you get them placed the way you like them, you're going to get out your decoupage medium. And I keep mine, I use it a lot, so I keep it in a little stainless steel container. It makes it easy for me because I use a lot of it. And you want to get out an older brush. Let me put this Ooh, my cookie. I'll put this up here so I can reach it easier. Okay. Rearrange the whole painting table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some decoupage medium. You don't need a lot. And then I lick the finger on my opposite hand. Pick up the letter. And then I can put it right back down. Where I want it. Or where I don't want it. Who knows. But you just go through and decoupage these letters on. As you can see, you don't need a lot of decoupage. Come back here. Don't have a fan on when you're doing this. I speak from experience.
So quick and easy lettering. Of course, we do have a couple of things to do to it. So it's not as easy as just gluing it on. Okay, that one's a little more crooked than I wanted, but it'll be okay. All right, so now I'm going to take a thin coat of decoupage and put it over each letter just to make sure that it's glued down. Just some added protection. All right, so there we have the lettering on. The next thing we're going to do is, while we let this dry, we can go ahead and add this ragged edge that goes around the whole arrow. And I just do that with a flat brush, and I just kind of corner load into soft black you need more you want to get that out and all I do is with the a corner load and with the corner that's loaded with soft black I just kind of go along the edge and squiggle this raggedy looking edge on so I'm not exactly sure what happened to my audio here but we'll just uh, move along and I'll try to narrate as best I can. So what we're going to do is we're just going to continue to add that raggedy edge to the uh, border of our arrow with that side load of soft black. It doesn't take a whole lot of time but um, it adds a whole lot to your piece. It just kind of finishes, finishes the piece off and it um, makes the center design area pop a little more. Alright, so we're almost finished with that ragged edge border and I just really like to add these to uh, some of my pieces because it just kind of helps to pop that design off the piece a little bit more. So we're going to go on and go back to our lettering and as you can see now the lettering, the little squares, are really bright white and so I want to knock the whiteness down of that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very light wash of burnt umber and I'm just going to paint this wash over each letter, each square and that's going to knock 
the whiteness down a little bit. And we want the reindeer to be our focus. And as it is right now, that white lettering is what our eye is going to right now. So just a quick little wash. It doesn't matter if you get off of the paper. It'll be just fine. All right, the wash has been applied, so now we want to dry this a little bit or let it dry, and we're going to come back and we are going to add a shadow to the left and bottom of each rectangle. I usually do this on all my lettering. This time I'm going to do it to the rectangle boxes that are, um, the lettering is on. So just a little bit heavier wash than what you uh, had last time, but you're just going to line to the outside left and the lower edge of each of those rectangles. And that, even though I toned the paper down to knock the lettering into the background a little more, I do want to make it stand out just a little bit by adding this shadow to the left and bottom with that wash of burnt umber and my liner brush. All right, so we're almost done adding that little shadow. And as you notice, some of them, it, the shadow went over onto another piece of white paper, and that is perfectly fine. So once we get this shadow done, we are going to add some detail lining around each rectangle. So we want to dry this really well um, because you know how finicky our, our ink pens can be. So I'm just going to dry this. And then I'm going to come back with my ultra fine point Sharpie, the black one, that, the one we used to put the lettering and details on the Deeropoly game. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to very nervously outline each rectangle. And that just adds just a little more interest to each letter. So take your time or do it in a hurry, doesn't matter, but just outline each of those rectangles with your ultra fine point black sharpie. So as we finish up this little added detail to the lettering, I just want to take a moment and tell you that I appreciate you taking my class and I thank you for um, being patient and letting me do this as a video. I hope that I get to paint with you again sometime. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week during the Artful Webinars virtual convention. Thank you so much.